guys welcome back to another one if you're new to this channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2024 kia sportage courtesy of fred beans kia in mechanicsburg pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we're in this one today because the sportage does have a great design it looks like really nothing else on the road it's so unique which is why i personally love the design but a couple nice updates for the 2024 model year as well and you still get america's best warranty being five years sixty thousand mile bumper to bumper 10 years 100 000 miles on the powertrain you cannot beat that so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2024 sportage first one being the lx starting at twenty seven thousand one hundred ninety dollars interesting fact about the pricing for that one that's actually fifteen dollars less than the 2023 model year that is the first vehicle that i've noted that has gone down in price as opposed to gone up because you know inflation and all that fun stuff so kind of interesting there but ex starting at twenty nine thousand one ninety x line all-wheel drive being the one we are in today starting at 31,990 SX for 32,690 SX Prestige for $34,690. You got the X Pro all wheel drive for 36,190 and the X Pro Prestige all wheel drive for $37,990. Yes, that was a lot of trim levels, but anything where I didn't say all wheel drive, front wheel drive comes standard. You can still add all wheel drive if you wanted to do that. Simply add $1,800 then to any of those prices. But so to simplify things a little bit, regardless of trim level that you go with there is one power plant that is going to come standard on the kia sportage powering the beast is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder putting out 187 horsepower at 6100 rpm 178 pound feet of torque coming in at 4000 rpm power being sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic mpg numbers then coming in at 25 in the city 33 in the highway for the front wheel drive 23 city 26 then on the highway for the all wheel drive but then the all wheel drive x pro gets 23 in the city 30 on the highway so a little bit different there but either way all of them taking regular unleaded fuel you gotta love that but before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our sportage i did want to mention to you guys the drive modes there's a circular dial located directly behind the shifter drive modes will include normal sport smart and snow adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the sportage here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 Kia Sportage here up to speed. All right, found our straightaway here. We are in sport driving mode in three, two, one, go. Nice. Nice initial get up and go there. It's loud. <laughs> it's not the quickest thing in the world. I will say that, but it was a nice initial punch because so many vehicles this these days are turbocharged so i'm kind of uh kind of always thinking in the back of my head there's going to be a slight delay at the beginning but this one was not it's, it's a nice little, initial little get up and go if i could talk and uh i kind of like that but yeah again it's not the quickest thing in the world but that's to be expected it's all good but to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back 11.8 inch solid rear discs as far as braking feel goes it's been great it's actually a little bit on the firmer side of things so it's not as soft of a braking feel as i was expecting as we traditionally do find in SUV so the braking feel to me feels excellent I don't have any issues there then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent strut type front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension as far as ride quality goes in my short little test drive here today it's been fine it's been absorbing Pennsylvania's road imperfections perfectly fine so far I haven't gone over too many road imperfections here's one yeah, it's fine. I don't have any issues there whatsoever. As far as steering feel goes, it does adjust dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in. Let me go ahead and put it back in sport. It's a heavier feel to the steering in the sport driving mode, but it's definitely a heavier feel to the steering in the sport driving mode, which I love. But if you didn't want that heavier steering feel, you could just put it back to normal and it loosens up again. So you kind of got something for everybody, you know? Uh, as far as cabin noise goes, I'm getting a little bit of wind noise coming into the cabin. Road noise is perfectly fine. No issues there, but a little bit of wind noise is 
sometimes do get with Kia and Hyundai products. So um, doesn't bother me personally, but it's there. <laughs> Touching our rear visibility, it's brilliant. I can see perfectly fine out the back. That is a massive, massive rear window. So in terms of rear visibility, 100% not gonna have any issues there either. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Kia Sportage. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Kia Sportage finished in wolf gray. In case you were curious of our exact exterior color name that we had on this one here today. I love the color. I think it looks pretty darn good. It's kind of like a, a matte gray. But anyways, this one was redesigned for the 2023 model year, so not a whole lot of exterior changes for 2024. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the Sportage is made, taking a look at the VIN. First character is the number five, indicating that the new Kia Sportage is built and assembled here in the US in case you were curious. But starting up front, gloss black front grille with some silver accents do come standard. Front skid plates actually do come standard as well, which kind of surprised me. It's typically an off-road feature, but underneath you will find some front skid plates. So that's kind of cool. To the sides, LED headlights with LED daytime running lights actually do come standard for all trim levels across the board. You don't always get that, so you like that. Automatic feature does come standard as well, along with automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle vehicle coming in the opposite direction. It's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. So love that feature personally. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end. Again, it's so unique. Looks like nothing else on the road you can instantly tell it's a Sportage, but Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around swinging around to the side of this one here, roof rails coming on the X-Line trim level and up. You guys can see those black roof rails up top there. Rear privacy glass does come standard for all trim levels across the board. You're gonna find some silver belt line molding for the LX and EX trim levels. Otherwise, it's gonna be gloss black when it surrounds essentially. Raised suspension for the X-Line and the X-Pro, so a little better ground clearance for those two particular trim levels. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors, they will be with LED integrated turret signals, uh, the integrated turret signals for the EX trim level and up. I want to specify that. Then take a look down at the wheel setup 17 inch alloys for the LX. 18 inch machine finished alloys for the EX, 19 inch gloss black alloys for our X line that we have with us here today, 18 inch gray alloys for the SX trims, and then 17 inch alloys with BF Goodrich all terrain tires for the X Pro. So that's going to be your off road trim specifically, I guess you could say. But that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Sportage, all the way up top, you are going to find a gloss black shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light if you're wondering where the rear window wiper is as i did at first it's actually going to be hidden tucked away up underneath hopefully you guys can see that i don't know if you're going to be able to but take my word for it it's up under there but anyways led taillights do come standard for all trim levels across the board gotta love that for added illumination at night there just below it all you will find a single exhaust outlet kind of tucked away underneath on the passenger side there so having said that I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. Alright, so now since we are around to the back of the Sportage, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is going to be a power tailgate for the X-Line trim level and up. Otherwise, it's a manual tailgate, but there is a button on the key fob itself here. There is actually a rubberized button on the tailgate then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 39.6 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, the rear seats do fold down. There's actually levers in the cargo area to fold down those rear seats quite easily. I love seeing that because you usually don't find that, believe it or not. Bumping that up to 74.1 cubic feet, that's actually a really good bit of space for the segment. Cargo lighting back there, it got LED cargo lighting, by the way. That is pretty cool. Usually you got the halogen bulbs in the cargo area. 12 volt power outlet as well. You got a rear cargo cover. There's some grocery bag hooks. There's tie down anchors as well. Then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a spare tire, which you guys know I love. And there's a little bit of space surrounding that spare tire. You could probably throw an ice scraper back there then as well. But then making your way up to the rear 
rear leg room, very impressive here, 41.3 inches. That's luxury good. For reference, I am an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the back seats there. Rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard along with rear ventilation. If you wanted the rear USB charging ports, then go with the EX trim level and up. But then make your way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating for the LX, 10-way power driver seat with power lumbar for the EX trim level and up, Heated front seats, EX trim level and up. You're going to find a Syntex upholstery for the X-Line, SX, and X-Pro trim levels. Eight-way power adjustable passenger seat for the Prestige trims. And then if you wanted ventilated front seats, go with the X-Pro Prestige. But overall, as far as seat comfort goes, surprisingly, incredibly comfortable. I didn't expect that. I wasn't expecting that. Even the headrests are super soft. So... Uh, yeah, Kia did a wonderful job with the seats, believe it or not, so I loved it. But then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is going to be leather wrapped for the EX trim level and up. Also, though, heated for the EX trim level and up. That was pretty cool, but 10 and 2 grips are definitely on the thicker side of things, too, which I definitely appreciated. But then making our way to the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your Kia logo on the one side. Most of your buttons are on the side of the key, though. The lock, unlock, and the button to pop the rear tailgate there. The remote start is that circular button that says hold that is pretty cool i love seeing that but it is all keyless entry with a push button start for the ex trim level and up so in our case all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just in front of the shifter there and so once started up 12.2 inch digital gauge cluster for every single trim level across the board. I love that because that's still not always the case. So well done Kia for that. Another cool thing with the gauges though, is when you do adjust the drive modes, the gauge colors are going to change slightly. So you got these red hues in the sport driving mode and then some normal smart and snow are all gonna be like these purple hues, but at least it changes a little bit. I like that. Of course there are steering wheel mounted controls. You can adjust what is actually on there. You got your digital speedometer, RPMs on the right there. How many miles you have left until you hit empty outside temperature. The list goes on pretty much everything you could possibly want on a gauge cluster. But now let's go ahead and check out the overall interior quality. Let me start with the panoramic sunroof that we have for the EX trim level and up. So you gotta love that. It is absolutely massive. LED interior lighting for the EX trim level and up as well. I liked seeing that up there. Dual zoom climate control for the EX trim level and up. Wireless phone charger for the EX trim level and up. I have a feeling the EX trim level and up is kind of the sweet spot here, if you ask me. Alloy foot pedals for the X Pro trim level only. Just to elaborate a little bit, just in front of the shifter is where the wireless phone charger is actually located. You have a 12 volt power outlet, a couple USB charging ports up there as well. Kind of just to the right of the shifter, you have your dual cup holders along with a little bit of more rubberized storage there. And within the center armrest, there's plenty of space in there. It's uh, absolutely no issues there. I kind of like this. Uh, I know it's probably fake wood trim, but it looks like wood trim. It's kind of like a beach wood trim found on the doors just above all the climate control information in the passenger side glove box. I love the uh, the gloss black trim surrounding the shifter here as well. A lot of other manufacturers would have finished that in a matte gray or a matte black, but I love the gloss black personally. It's super easy to clean, and uh, I've always had it in my cars, and I always it, it always looks good because I keep it looking good and it does look good. So anyways, overall, as far as interior quality goes, Kia did a pretty darn good job for this segment, especially. So good job again. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen. There's gonna be two different size screens. Eight inch color touchscreen display is gonna come on that LX trim level, but every other trim level is gonna give you a 12.3 inch color touchscreen display. Either way though, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming. Either way, you get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, of course factory navigation system for the SX trim level and up. There's also a cool quiet mode up there as well where it eliminates the rear speakers if your kids are sleeping and limits the speakers in the front so they can stay sleeping. Of course, you have your climate control information up there. There's also a voice memo system though. So if you wanted to record your voice and play it back at a later date so you don't forget something, that is there for you as well. That's always a fun little feature I find on Kia and Hyundais. Um, of course, you can check out your radio information up there. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there's two of them. You're gonna find six speakers for the LX, EX, and X line that we have today. But then there is an eight speaker Harman Kardon sound system for the SX trim level and up. That comes with 400 watts, by the way. So we do have the six speaker sound system. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> Actually a lot better than I expected for a six speaker sound system, if I'm being honest. That had a decent amount of bass, plenty of clarity. So yeah, for six speakers, 
it's pretty darn good. But last thing I want to mention you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the Sportage in reverse, you of course will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Not the highest quality out there, but it gets the job done nonetheless. And as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by saying IIHS top safety pick that applies to all trim levels. So great start there. Front side, side current airbags do come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats. Rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Four collision warning with car, pedestrian, and cyclist detection. Lane following assist, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, a driver attention monitoring system, and rear parking sensors actually do come standard for all trims as well. Don't always find that coming standard, but EX trim leveling up is going to add to that a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Sportage, very unique design, definitely stands out, looks like nothing else on the road, and that is a good thing because it looks good. Comfortable headrests and comfortable seats, like I said to you guys, didn't expect to find that because it's always hit or miss in this particular segment, but in this case, the Sportage is crushing it with the seat comfort and all that. Digital gauges found on all trim levels is something you don't always find, so I love seeing that because digital gauges are fun for me because it allows more customization, meaning when you change the drive mode, for example, the colors change, that kind of thing, so big fan of that. You still get America's Best Warranty, of course. You can't beat that. Five years, 60,000 miles, bumper to bumper, 10 years, 100,000 miles on the powertrain. That's plenty of peace of mind there. Also, plenty of space in this thing 74.1 cubic feet i think is what i said that's above average for this segment that's a lot of space with luxury like rear legroom as well so really i i'm not sure i can think of anything better like kia did an incredible job on the sportage maybe a little bit of the cabin noise with the wind noise but other than that they crushed it absolutely something i personally would check out this is a really nice suv let me know what you guys think of the sportage in the comments section below that's about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all for 10 years ish now do appreciate you guys watching more than you know i will see you guys all in the next video stay on